basically investment is all about foregoing present pleasure and gratification. You could be spending the money, but instead you're putting it to work to earn more money. That's what capitalism means, putting wealth to create wealth. Now, historically, sometimes people have never been able to afford to do this themselves. They've needed to get partners. It started with merchants who'd club together in twos and threes and they'd kit out a ship to sail across the oceans and bring back a cargo of spices or salt cod or whatever, which they'd then sell for profit and they'd divide up between them proportional to the shares they'd taken in the enterprise. And five of them put in an equal amount of money to fund it, they'd each get 20% of the total proceeds. Simple though it is, that is basically what modern business is all about. You buy shares in a company, you're buying a proportion of the profits that they make. George Bush is alleged to have said, the French have no word for entrepreneur. Well, <laughs> the joke is he was right. They do have a word entrepreneur, but it means a tradesman, like a plumber or a window fitter. Uh, when we use the word entrepreneur, we mean someone who does the new and exciting thing of starting up a business that hasn't existed before. I've got a new type of digger here. I think this digger and bulldozer is going to be so successful, people will buy it and will make profits. But I don't know enough money myself. Can I get some of my friends to join in? Yes, 20 of you, right? Put up a proportion each, you get a proportion of the company. If we're right and people do buy the digger, we all make money. In addition to the dividends, that's your share of the profit, you can also sell your share. And if the company is successful, making lots of profit, then you know, the value of your share rises. That's called a capital gain. So you get a combination of the dividends and the capital gain. And that's why historically equities, meaning shares in business, have been just about the best investment you can make. Now, there was something introduced called limited liability. It's very controversial. Basically, it means that you're not responsible. You can't lose more than you put into a venture. You can't be raided for your house. You don't have to sell your children to slavery. You know, it's only the amount you actually put into the company that's at risk. That's called limited liability. Some people think it's controversial today, but there's no doubt it encouraged lots more people to engage in entrepreneurial activity because it limits the risk that they're putting into it. And that's why you know, we've had so much expansion of business and so much creation of new products, new processes. When you talk to people who've started successful businesses, their eyes light up and they tell you it was hell. They lost weight, they had horrendous time, they, they got bills they couldn't pay, they, they, it was night and day struggle to survive. But the sheer thrill of their eyes light up because it was the most exciting time in their lives. They were creating something new and they, while the money is the measure of success, that's not the reason they did it. They did it for the sheer thrill of the chase to do something new and worthwhile and they do so at a profit, and that profit is returned to their shareholders, and that encourages more people to do likewise, start more business, and create more wealth. It's a great thing. Madsen Piri attempted to prove once again that economics is fun.